Thank you for joining this conversation. Um, I have a very interesting guest today. Mr. Yashwan Sinha has agreed to speak to me about many things that India needs right now. Remember, Mr. Yashwan Sinha was uh, India's finance minister under two different prime ministers. He also served as India's foreign affairs minister. So there's so much to talk about, about India's handling of the economy right now, given where we are in terms of inflation, petrol prices, joblessness, and uh, all of the impact that COVID is uh, sort of bringing on to our economies. Thank you for giving me your time. I appreciate it. Mr. Sinha, if we look at foreign affairs, one of the questions I wanted to ask you also um, is what's happening in Afghanistan. There have been reports right now as the US and its allies pull out of Afghanistan, they're moving their troops out, that the Taliban is sort of taking over from the fringes, starting to become more prominent, starting to make moves politically. What does this mean for us as a neighborhood? What does it mean for India? What does it mean for Pakistan? Uh, we know the current prime minister of Pakistan, Mr. Imran Khan, is fairly close in some ways to uh, that disposition as well. Does it make the entire neighborhood unstable? If the U.S. troops were to completely withdraw from Afghanistan, then from my little knowledge of Afghanistan, I can tell you that it will be then taken over by Taliban. Now, I have read reports in the media that the government of India is informally talking to Taliban. Perhaps it's a correct approach because if Taliban takes over Afghanistan, we should not allow Afghanistan to fall uh, directly into the lap of uh, uh, Pakistan. India has a lot of goodwill in Afghanistan. I I'm, I'm have personally witnessed it during my visit to Afghanistan. So we should keep that goodwill. And India should continue to play an important role in, um, in, in uh, Afghanistan. So the reaching out to Taliban, by, however informally by the Indian uh, authority, is a step in the right direction. Taking a look very quickly now uh, at the economy, Mr. Sinha, we have petrol and diesel more than 100 and the other almost close to 100. It's, play, it's wreaking havoc on the inflation numbers and uh, at a time when a lot of people have lost their jobs. Now, our last count, CMIE says 22 million people have lost their jobs in India in the second wave of COVID. Do you believe the economy is being managed well at this point? No, I don't think the economy is being managed well. Uh, the government has uh, uh, not shown any perspicacity to, you know, really meet the challenge of the situation. Uh, they should have been aware of the impact of the lockdown uh, on, on, on uh, uh, industrial production. Uh, agriculture, of course, uh, because it's localized, has continued to do well and has sustained the economy to a large extent. But the industrial and services sector of the economy has, uh, has almost collapsed. If we are having a minus growth rate of 9% or 10%, then it's bad news for the economy. Then, uh, you know, when we impose the lockdown, we should have anticipated the impact it will have on migrant labor, which we did not. And we saw those sorry scenes of people walking back thousands of kilometers to their homes. So that situation has not uh, uh, improved uh, yet. I'd also like to tell you, remind you, even today, all is not lost. And if the government takes the right steps, then the economy can be revived, uh, maybe over a period of a couple of years. What, according to you, would be these right steps? The right steps would be to devote your resources, the country's resources, to uh, job generating uh, and enterprises, you know, uh, we have a great shortage, say, in our country on the infrastructure front, you're aware of that. So you take up creation of infrastructure facilities in our country, build, um, you know, lakhs and crores of, uh, uh, lakhs of uh, kilometers of roads that will generate employment opportunity, build houses that will create employment opportunities. There are so many things which can be done. Mr. Sinha, the problem obviously seems in terms of government spending and where the money is going to come from. And I'm going to go back to what Mr. Dharmendra Pradhan, the Petroleum Minister, 
said in a statement about a week ago when questioned about petrol prices, he said the government is spending on vaccines right now, 35,000 crore rupees. We're spending on schemes where we're handing out free ration. Where is the money going to come from? We need to save money, which is why the tax on fuel is this high. Do you agree with this formula of taxing the poorest of our country in order to run the schemes for the poorest of our country? My first point is the government will have to be serious about management of the fund. You will recall that the finance minister announced two packages of 20 lakh crore each. Now, 40 lakh crore rupees is the uh, amount of the two packages, which is a humongous amount for our economy, uh, almost 20% of our GDP. What happened to that uh, money? What happened to the relief package? Because the government took the minimalist burden on itself and put the burden on other people, the banks and financial institutions, which did not lead to anything. I don't mind the government raising its fiscal deficit, raising resources through borrowing, but committing that, that money to productive schemes, which will lead to employment generation. Mr. Sinha, um, in the last one year since the lockdown began, the poor of our country have gotten a lot poorer. We have increased the number of poor, starving, malnourished people in our country, especially children. Child marriage numbers are going up. Girls are dropping out of school. Gender equality numbers have gotten worse. But the billionaires of India have become richer by about 35% in that same period of time. Would you support the idea of increasing the tax on the super, super rich of our country in order to pay for what needs to be done for the bottom of the pyramid? Yes, I will. And let me tell you that these people have become super, super rich because of the policies of the government and the patronage of the government. And uh, this is something which is uh, in these difficult times, hurting Indians emotionally uh, and mentally. That while we are suffering, here are some people who are making tons of money and the government seems to be encouraging them. They're not contributing to national welfare, but they're only increasing their own private profits. So they should, of course, be taxed at a higher rate of income so that uh, there are more resources which are available for the people of this, for the welfare of the people of this country. I entirely agree with that approach. Also, you, we know that the finance minister had allocated 35,000 crore rupees for the vaccines in the budget in February. She had also said that we will allocate more if necessary. The prime minister has recently, at the beginning of June, said the government will now pay for even what the state governments uh, procure. We understand that would add another burden uh, and take that up uh, by another 10,000 crore rupees from rough calculation. Um, do you think that... This, the, the, this government has managed this vaccine policy well. Could it have been done better now that we might be staring at the possibility of a third wave? Could we have vaccinated more of our citizens with the money that was allocated? Could we have planned better? Yeah, we could have certainly planned better. We were uh, aware of the devastating consequences of uh, this disease. And we also knew that the that vaccination was the only way out. Now we have a very large population compared to other countries and therefore vaccination of our population was a stupendous task for the government and they should have gone about it purposefully, methodically and ensured that we vaccinated the largest number of people in the quickest possible time. Instead of that, they vacillated, they floundered and it was only when they uh, became acutely aware of the fact that the Supreme Court of India was going to order um, uh, free vaccination, that the government uh, decided to take credit for it and uh, agreed to free vaccination. So this is a step in the right direction. Now all that we need to do is to ensure that uh, vaccination takes place. I still see a very great fluctuation in numbers of uh, people being vaccinated in various states. The government of India should ensure that vaccination takes place. After all, we have the example and experience of polio uh, drops and uh, it's not that this country has not done it before. We can do it again and that's the only way out of the current crisis 
of COVID. Mr. Sinha, uh, thank you so much for speaking with me this evening and for sharing your ideas and your views. I'm sure our audience has enjoyed this conversation. I wish thank you very good luck. Thank you.